So, gentlemen, let's uh, let's take a I look. I a sound effect for it. <laughs> um, Mick fires up the first cigarette of the morning. Very nice. No, <laughs> no. Not the first? No, no there you go. No. Wake and bake. No, no. That'll get your turkey, uh, that'll get you your turkey less dry. Indeed. But no, it was, a, it was an egg one, too, because I just had eggs. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Thanks, Mick. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note. I can't wait till I'm in studio. Um, yeah, me neither. All right, so here is the Cowboys offense versus that Chargers defense. Now, the Chargers on defense run basically the same system that the Cowboys do. They've got um, their defensive coordinator from the Seattle tree of running the uh, the Seattle-type press cover defense with a cover two, uh, relying on getting pressure from their front four, which has been pretty successful this year. But let's start off right here by putting in – old T Smith at the left tackle spot. That guy needs to stay there all day. That is very, very important going up against a speed rusher in Melvin Ingram for the Chargers. Well, yes, sir. If they're looking for a defensive change, Tim Norton Jr. is uh, available. Yeah, he is. That's because he's terrible. All right. Uh, on the right defensive end, Joey Bosa, obviously – uh, a big force. However, I will say, despite the fact that Lyle Collins showed up on the injury report, and that does concern me greatly, I think it's because of rest, and I think it's because he knows he's going up against Bosa. I think Collins can handle Bosa. Simply by the way that Bosa does his pass rush, he's more of a power rusher than a speed guy. He, he can do both, but he's not you know, so side-to-side -side agile. So I look for that matchup to be pretty good in the Cowboys' favor, and if Tyron Smith is out here, that should shut down Melvin Ingram. Not completely, but enough to keep the Cowboys upright, which is good. Uh, Brandon Meebane and Corey Legit, uh, he's been hurt. He is questionable. Uh, they don't have much behind him. Brandon Meebane has been a terrible fit in this system. Uh, the Cowboys should have a good day running the football with Alfred Morris and Rod Smith. Now let's look at the secondary. As I said, they like to play that Seattle system, so you will see a die down in the box to stop the run, especially if you get success early. That is a good thing. Trey Boston, who had like a career day last week picking off passes uh, against Nathan Peterman, that is a guy I think that uh, – oh, we just lost the mix camera. Sorry, guys. Uh, there we go. Um. Not that, my camera. I know, right? It's terrible. All right. Um, that is the guy to watch because Trey Boston does make some can can make some good, pretty good plays in coverage. But because they're playing that press zone, this could be a good day for both Dez and Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley going up against the uh, the Iowa cornerback Desmond King. Beasley does have a small speed advantage, which is pretty rare to say. So I'd like to see, you know, we talked about this a couple weeks, weeks ago, Dustin, where Beasley would do the out as he normally does, but then take it upfield. That's something I think could work this week. And if they have the time to throw the ball with this pass rush uh, being negated, I think that's a play. I think you'll see Beasley with a couple down-the-field strikes. I think you could see Terrence Williams with a couple down-the-field strikes. If the running game works, they can get the safety in the box, which normally, it's funny, we normally say, man, when they do that, that's a real problem for the Cowboys. I think this is a game where you get Dak rolling out a little bit, you attack that defense down the field. I think this is going to be a pretty good day, gave, bleh, day for the Cowboys offense overall, as I think there will be plays to be made, and if the running game is working, it will all play right off of that. I do like the linebackers for the uh, uh, for the Chargers uh, in Toomer and Brown. Both those are a couple of playmaking guys, so I don't see Jason Witten necessarily having a great day. Uh, I don't see a whole lot over the middle. I think the places you're going to have to win this game, and this is going to have to be a DAC victory type of game, is down the field on the corners, and, you know, this will be a game that will prove if, if Dak can really be that guy. Yeah, maybe look for Terrence Williams to make a couple of, or Bryce Butler to, to jump up and make a few plays downfield, because those are usually the two receivers who, who are able to make those plays 20, 30 yards downfield, uh, where, you know, like we talked about Des Bryant, he's now sort of become that slant guy. Um, you know, I... I, what I'd really like to see them 
do with Dez is find a way, and this is the problem, because <laughs> the, the coordinators and the head coach don't seem to be adept at finding ways to get guys open. But, you know, find a way to get Dez streaking across the middle of the field, get him a little bit of space, and get him ahead of steam. Uh, and and, and that, you just get that big bowling ball moving uh, across yeah, the field and downfield. <laughs> Easy. Yep. All right, so another point. How is that racist? Uh, hang on, hang think on. Think about All it. All right, so another place that I think is interesting about this, and we've talked about this in the past before as well, Mr. Copening, and that is the idea that this is a – this is an offense that relies on talent, not on scheme. Yep. And that to me is, a, is an interesting – um, you know, like you say, they're they're expecting their guy to get open. Like they basically match up one on one, and they say, you know, look, this guy can get open. Make it happen. And yeah, exactly, make it happen. And that to me has been, uh, you know, less than less than ideal this time. So, uh, you know, I, I you're gonna have to see some more scheming. You saw some last week. It was very funny. Uh. Dustin, when I said last week, you know, they had the one kind of trick play, and you were like, oh, a little trickery out of the old Cowboys. And I said, yeah, that was the one. That was their one. (laughs) Well, it's because they had one play, and then they had maybe one play based off of that, and that's it. Like, that's that's all we got here. So, uh, you know, when when you have an injury like Tyron Smith, and you talk about, you know, hey, we trust our guys to get open. Well, what does that take? Well, that takes time. And when your quarterback has a second or even a half second less time in the pocket, in the backfield, uh, he's got to get the ball out quicker. And and guys are not able to get open as much as often. And so your offense stagnates. And so that's why Tyron Smith has been such a big loss. Uh, and I, I did feel like against the Eagles, they, they did go out there with, with a – you saw them give a lot of help to that side of the ball, but, but that has consequences elsewhere on the field and, and, you know, what else you're able to do, especially with your tight end. Uh, you know, because that's one of the things I noticed a lot. They were bringing Witten over that side and then, uh, you know, bringing Hannah over. Uh, and I mean, they just – you know, it, 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 the good thing is – I don't think they're going up against a team that's as dynamic as that Eagles, as you pointed out with the numbers. It looks a little more even than it actually is. Right. Um, But you're going to have to find at least one score from somewhere that is not the generic offense. So whether it be on defense, whether it be with special teams, uh, you know, even if it's something where you create a turnover down inside the 10 and you're able to pick the ball up and punch it in. Um, th- that, you're going to have to find that extra point somewhere because I think if you're going just straight man against man, uh, you know, just matchup against matchup, they haven't shown you anything that leads you to believe that in an evenly matched game with this particular set of players that they're going to be able to pull off that victory. No, I agree. All right, so let's let's take a look at the other side of things, and the uh, the Cowboys on defense versus a a Chargers offense that is is very hit or miss. Now I put them in a two tight end set here with with Antonio Gates and Hunter Henry uh, at the tight end spots. Those two guys, honestly, those two guys are the things that worry me the most on this team. Look, I know Keenan Allen's great as a number one corner, uh, number one wide receiver. Uh, Tyrell Williams will cause some matchup problems at six four. Uh, you've got Melvin Gordon. You've got a nice fullback there, and Derek Watt at times that can that can lead block, and you'll see some eye formation stuff out of them. But I think the only thing that scares me in this game is Antonio Gates. All right. And the only reason it scares me is because you only have one tight end stopper in Byron Jones. Jeff Heath is not going to be a good matchup there. So if I've got Byron Jones over here on Hunter Henry, that means Antonio Gates could be free. Now what you might see the Cowboys do is roll a little bit more with that 
3-2-6 and see Chidobi Awuzie come in the game to play the other strong safety spot, uh, you know, somewhere in this spot right here to match up there. I think you might see some more of that this week, especially if, if the Chargers get behind and have to start slinging it around a little bit. Um, I also didn't put Travis Benjamin on there because he's pretty much a non-factor. So, Russell Okun is okay. Uh, Dan Feeney is okay. Their center is not great, but this side of the offensive line is where I, you need to find your concern. This is the strength of the Cowboys' pass rush. Wiggins and Barksdale, who comes into the game questionable, are going to be overmatched. I think this is a very positive matchup for the Cowboys as far as pass rush goes. Now, they don't give up a lot of sacks. Phillip Rivers has only been sacked 12 times all season. Dak Prescott has been sacked 12 times in the last three games. So... That's the actually last two games. So that's the thing you have to worry about there is that Rivers does get rid of it quicker. Well, what does that mean? Well, to me, if, if I'm the Cowboys, I trust that pass rush, and I come up and I play press. I play press. I'll keep, keep my safeties back if I can to play over the top in a, in a two deep, play a press zone coverage, let these guys roam the middle, and basically say, I dare you to beat me. Now, that's why I say the tight ends to me scare me, because in that cover two, that's when you see the seam route and guys like that get successful. So you could see some plays down the field. All that being said, and in the red zone, which if the Chargers get in the red zone a lot, that's going to be a problem. So for the Cowboys, the big three things that the Cowboys need to do, and we'll put them right here, is one, zero turnovers. Don't turn over the ball and give them a short field. <clears throat> that's the first one to me. Secondly, don't give up big plays. So if you can keep them grinding, they are not a good team at that. So make them grind the football. Um, they're not great on third downs. They're, they're, you know, they will get themselves off the field. So that's the other thing there. And then finally, um, when it comes to offense, I think this is a game where, while you don't want to give up big plays, this is a game you want to grind. You need the time of possession. T-O-P. Needs to be a big factor there. Let me get that on camera. If they can do those three things, which, again, sound pretty generic, but those three things today, uh, I think it's going to be a good day.